get an opportunity to go down and play a national champion. Uh, got it up on their stadium, 16-game uh, win streak. Uh, great football team, talented, uh, confident, uh, fast in all spots. So it's going to be a, a great challenge for our kids. We're going to find out where we are uh, when it comes to playing top 25 teams. So questions? I was looking at some of the numbers from your game last week, and their quarterback, Elliot, had a lot of success, did a lot of work on early downs, first down, second down. As you talk all the time, I mean, you got to stop the run. That's obviously a priority. How do you balance emphasizing that with the fact that, you know, when you face a team like Central Florida where every down's a passing down, you know what I mean? It's not just third down. How do you balance, you know, those two? Yeah, I mean, they're rushing running? the ball for over 250. I don't even know what it is. Um, and the same thing, when we did not, the first thing is you got to try to make a team one dimensional so you know what you got to stop. Uh, when, when you're, you know, when you're trying to stop the run and you don't uh, like you need to, even though we rushed for more yards than they did. But when you don't just dominate the run game defensively, uh, it opens up where they can do anything they want to. And then that's when, when it's hard to, to defend anybody. You know, if you want to stop the pass and stop the, the pass and let them run it. And, but you got to be good at something. And, you know, through the years, it's been stopping the run. And we got to do a better job of stopping it. Um, but you know that they got enough speed on the field that you know you got to do it in the right way. So we got to find the right way to do it. How you talked you know, about how tough it is to replicate with your scout team what they do offensively. How did your scout team do this week? You know I think they did a pretty darn good job. Um, at times I think our, our coaches were more focused on coaching the scout teams, unfortunately, because you're you know trying to get the look for your kids, and then you coach the look off of the tape. That's the only part I didn't really like is is you're so you know we, we you know. We put you know, one guy's coaching receivers on this side, one guy's coaching receivers on this side. We got one coach that's coaching the right guard and right tackle, so he can quickly say, "Hey, you two do this," instead of trying to tell, you know, eight guys what to do. And have usually we have two, maybe three guys telling an offense what to do. You know, our full-time coaches were coaching their offense, you know, trying to get the look, and then you know we'll worry about what our defense looks like afterwards. Uh, besides today, today we slowed the, te slowed the tempo down and just coached football uh, like we'd like to. Um, but it really takes you out of what you want to do. You want to coach your kids every play on the field. So that's kind of how we um, got practice done quickly so we could, you know, we were snapping the ball between, you know, probably 8 and 15 seconds most of the time this week. Does it limit like, how creative, I guess, like, for, for lack of a better word, you can be with your defense? I mean, this doesn't seem like the week that you're going to call 72 different coverages or something like that. If you do, you're in big, you're in big trouble. You really are. And that's why they do it. I mean, you know, the, the advantage for their offense is they're going to try to keep people vanilla. And so they know where you are. They're blocking statues, and everybody would like to block statues if they uh, have an opportunity to do that. So they keep you vanilla because you can't get too fancy. Uh, it's hard to get personnel out on the field. It's hard to do a lot of things because of the speed of the game. You know, we just hope they get the call. It's like, you know, it's like the beginning of practice today. I had Coach Harley change and just make sure, you know, him and Coach Partridge, Coach Harley, Coach Partridge, and, and, uh, and Archie Collins, you know, we got three different signals during the game. We'll rotate them, but they got to be dressed the same out there on the field just to make everything game like for our kids. Are you comfortable with not doing as much substituting in this game that, that you might, because of that speed? You're never comfortable, but if they sub, we sub. I mean, that's why, you know, a couple weeks ago I got mad when they didn't give us a chance to sub. But when they sub, we have to take our advantage, our opportunity to sub. I mean, they're going to get tired too. Um, but, you know, they're dictating, and, and they'll, they'll, you'll see some routes where this side will run real fast, and these guys will stand around, very similar to Baylor. They don't run very far, you know. It's because they can rest up. And then the next time these guys rest, and these guys run, if that makes sense. I mean, they, they'll go right side, left side, as far as you know. Which is just again, it's Baylor like. It's it's what it is. So um, you know, we'll sub when we can sub. Um, we've got a plan, and and uh, we just got to you know execute the plan. Do you have? We have a need then to have a conversation with the officials before the game. Always do. So special need this week. Though. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's every week. I mean, it's no different than last week or the week before. Uh, maybe Georgia Tech, we didn't have to have that conversation. But anytime it's a tempo team, we talk about it, and you hope they, you know. I mean, last week they were—they did. I told you that on Monday they were—they were—they were terrific. They did a great job, and um, it was, you know, not that, that speed wasn't this speed. This is this is a totally different ball game. It's it's totally different. You guys, like I said, don't blink or you'll miss a play. Michael Salahuddin sort of keeping us on our toes with different numbers. No name on the back of his jersey is. I know Quadrine Darren playing great, but is he someone that you guys want to keep as? Part of the puzzle, I guess, on offense? You know, it's those, those four games, you know, I told him after four games, you're going to have to make us play you. So we'll see what you do with the ball in your hand. But uh, um, we'll see what number he is this week. Um, he'll have his name on the back of the jersey. Uh, we're not really trying to hide his name. I didn't know his name wasn't on the back of the jersey. 
to be honest with you, but I want his name on his jersey like everybody else. He's a good kid, and, and uh, you know, again, that's the advantage of that, those four games is we're able to find a little niche for him to, you know, if it's three plays a game, four plays a game, it's going to be better. When we lose two tailbacks this year and we're preparing for the future, it gives the guy, you know, you're just happy, hey, he's held on to the ball. I mean, those are all things that, that are critical. You don't know how a guy's going to react in a, in a game situation. That'll be an advantage for him going into the next spring. Speaking of that role, I mean, uh, is that like a new concern for coaches now that like, four games go by, the guy feels like he's – He's played in them, but he's not playing enough, or he doesn't like how the season is going. Is that something to not worry about? You guys just yeah, have I mean, to take into account now? You know, we're not going to take into account. We're going to try to keep treating our players like we do. I think Pitt's a great place to play. I think we treat our kids well. Um, you know, and, and again, I'm not going to worry about the problems other people, you know, just hope we don't have that problem. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, it's about to happen at some point because, um, you know, they got so many people in their ears about you should be doing this, you should be getting this. And it's like, you know, only 11 guys get on the field, and that's a sad thing. When you're a healthy football team, which we are to this point, uh, it's 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 hard to get everybody the reps you want to. And usually, it happens, you know, naturally. You know, this this year it hadn't happened naturally. So, you know, we're focused on what our guys have to do this weekend, and and uh, and making sure we have a good you know atmosphere here at the University of Pittsburgh. I know you always say the past doesn't matter, but you're going to give me some other stat. Uh, well, no, will you, will you be playing? the uh, Miami Clemson card to your players this week saying, if you did it before, you can do it again? Not really. I mean, I didn't play it, you know, against Miami about Clemson. We really didn't talk about it much, uh, to be honest with you, or even at all. I mean, you know, every week is a big game. You know, they don't have a you know, easy game left on the schedule. Um, it's just they're not there. Every week is that same game, you know, whether they're ranked or not ranked. Um, so, no, we haven't played that card. In uh, uh, in the, in North Carolina's first two games, Pat, they had gotten 36 points before getting 38 against you all. Um, you said given, North Carolina's offense had got 36. They had gotten 36 in, in their first two games against okay. East Carolina and, and Cal before getting 38 against you all. If given those uh, given those struggles against that team, as a coach, what gives you hope or belief that your defense can perform better against a much better offense? You know, uh, you know, are are they much better? You know, I, I don't know. I, mean, I think North Carolina's pretty good. I mean, I, you know, it's hard to say this offense is better than that offense. I mean, they got some good players. You walk out on the field, look at what North Carolina looks like on the field. You know, I just heard some of the guys say that. Number 97 for North Carolina, that's the biggest guy I ever played against. I mean, they're a good football team, and they're recruiting at a high level as well. Um, so, you know, who's better? You know, I don't know. We'll find out after the game. But, you know, every week is a different week. And, and, and like I said, sometimes you get fat and happy and think that you've arrived. And that's why, you know, that's why I refer to, you know, Jerry's question about is this the best defense? I mean, it's like, really? You get evaluated week by week. Nobody cares what you did at Georgia Tech. Nobody. And I've said that for years as a defensive coordinator. You get evaluated week by week. And last week was last week. Is that the best football we've played? I doubt it. You know, our best football is ahead of us. And just because maybe we didn't play as good as we'd like to, you know, give North Carolina some credit. But this is a new week. And, and, and sometimes, guys, you know, we talk about handling adversity, right? And then we'll also talk about handling success. How well did we handle success? I mean, you walk around and you, you shut out Georgia Tech in the first half, everybody's patting you on the butt, saying, yeah, you guys are great, great comeback, great bounce back, great bounce back. And your head starts to bounce like that. Um, so, you know, what, what is it? I mean, who are, who are those kids? Who are they? Um, to me, it's, a, it's, a, it goes, it's weekly. It's weekly you get evaluated. And that's the way, that's where the hope is right there. It's, it's a weekly deal. And, and uh, whether they're better or not, then, you know, even if they're better, Skill wise and athletically, are they better up front? Are they, you know, what is the whole, you know, it's the whole package. So it's, every week's different, it really is. How you got uh, four or five guys from the Orlando area, what's it mean for those guys to be able to play a game down there? And um, I guess is that sort of one of the advantages to playing a non conference game in an area that you do recruit heavily? You can kind of hold that up for those guys. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's certainly not something that we're saying, hey, you know, come to Pitt because we're playing down there. But it means a lot to those guys that get to go back home. You know, Lopes will be the, the honorary captain uh, this week, game captain, uh, I should call it, um, you know, this week. I think he's excited about it. I think our guys were excited. You know, they picked him because he's, he plays a lot of emotion and and uh, has had a great year for us so far. So uh, he, he's a guy that will play with a little bit more emotion down there, going in his backyard. I'm sure he'll have more family there. Uh, so I think it means something when, you know, you go back and there's maybe more of you know, your friends and family can – can play, but uh, you know, it's another game. Got to be prepared. Um, how's Jalen Twyman looked? He hasn't 
gotten a ton of snaps, but uh, is he showing you some flashes? Yeah, Jalen played. Jalen did some good things last week, and you know, it's like Coach Partridge said, and really every one of our coaches say every week, you, know, you get an opportunity to go out there and play. It's hard to get 11 guys out there, so you get an opportunity to play. Um, you got to make some things happen, and Jalen made some things happen last week, and he deserves more playing time. So uh, it's one of those things you get an opportunity, take advantage of your opportunity. You get an opportunity, and all of a sudden you don't play so well. You know, it's hard to put you back out there again. So Jalen, he's uh, deserved more reps. Pat, over the years, before you got here, Pitt had trouble with mobile quarterbacks like this guy is. Do you feel that the way you recruited in the last few years that you're more comfortable or more able to take care of a quarterback like that? You know, you're never comfortable. I mean, it just brings another dimension to the football game. I mean, he can hand it off, he can throw it, and then all of a sudden he can scramble and make plays with his feet. And he'll have some quarterback runs. He likes to run the football. They like to put the ball in his hands. So, um, you know, you never feel comfortable at it because, you know, it's just one arm tackle away from missing that guy because he can make you miss. But is your roster now you know, more, more suited with a guy like that? You know, uh, I, I take Juan Price back right now. I mean, is it suited? I don't know. I mean, it's all. I mean, that would be disrespecting Juan Price and some of the other good players that we've had on this team, Shakir Soto. Um, you know, those, those guys are good players too. So I can't say that. Do you tell the guys that um, in terms of where UCF is sort of in the national picture that like a game like this, they're sort of chomping at the bit to play a, a power five team, sort of try to prove themselves and stuff like that? Not in so many words that have mentioned that, but, you know, we know who they played, we know who we played, and, and uh, I'm sure they're going to, you know, they're going to get fired up for the game, too. It's not a rivalry game, um, but they get a chance to bring an ACC team into their own house. And uh, I'm sure they're going to want to you know, go out and play against you know, um, Power 5 Conference. You guys are the lucky ones, I guess, mm -hmm. this year. So. Pat, you uh, mentioned the four games. This would be five for Shockey. Are you expecting him to play? Yes. Yeah, he's playing. He's playing the whole year. Pat, are you happy with the way your secondary is going to be able to match up with Central Florida's guys? Because it seemed like North Carolina, those guys in the right position just not making tackles or plays. Yeah. Um, again, not necessarily even in the right position. I mean, you, you say that, um, and I'd go back to saying they're not. I mean, it looks like they are, but they mm -hmm. aren't. And again, it goes down to that perfect alignment versus the tempo. We focus a lot on getting lined up. And this week, it's kind of even faster. So um, it's, it's, it's attention to those details. Um, but, I, you know, I feel good going into every game. We're going to find out how we match up against our guys. You never played against them before, so you don't know really who they are yet. Um, so we'll, you know, we'll find out uh, in, in good time, that's for sure. What? Thank you very much. You good? Did you uh, no, no, Craig, you got one more. <laughs> no, you, no, you no, sure? You, know, when you, oh, you when do you, have you one more. Yeah. The, uh, you, you guys first time the. You do have one more. And you get these long questions. Oh, and <laughs> I will try to keep it short. When, uh, when you guys first signed the contract to play UCF, I guess it was like January 2017 or so, what were you expecting to. Uh, you signed to, it in 2000? Yeah, from, you're saying last year anyway? Or that was publicized. You know, yeah, I don't know when that. Yeah, I don't know when it was signed. I couldn't tell you. But what did what what sort of team did you expect? Expect? Would you have expected anything close to what you? Guys you know what? I before? I wasn't here. I don't think when it got when that got. I, th I don't think so. I don't know. EJ, maybe you know. I have no idea. I don't worry about what we expected, what we didn't expect. I have no idea. Could, could I ask you about that one more quick one? <laughs> okay, Dad. There's no staff. <laughs> um, I read an article last night in ESPN in the magazine about this new headset rule that says you're only going to have yeah. 20 headsets. They never said how many you, were, you what was had before. Four. Well, everybody had different ones. Some had 40, some had, I think we were about 22. So we lost two guys. Mm -hmm. um, so. Gus Malzone said it's going to be the ruination of college football. I, you know, I don't know about that. I mean, we're losing two headsets, which, you know, I think they went too low, but they were trying to eliminate, you know, that rule was meant to eliminate staff sizes. And, you know, and there's some people that have a lot, a lot of coaches. Um, you know, some guys making a half a million dollars you know, as a quality control coach, so that's what it's. There was a good anecdote in there about the Pitt defensive coordinator in 1999 firing Joe Moorhead over the, over the headsets for not getting something. Larry Coyer. Yeah, Larry Coyer. <laughs> <laughs>